Carol Taylor Carney here of Howling Arts, and I'm standing with Maureen Bowie, who has just finished giving us some wonderful work that you see here on the wall that ranges from a wall hung piece to a flying piece, and she's going to explain them to us. Go ahead, Maureen. Well, this painting is titled About the Author, and in creating it, I had books in mind. Um, being that I have a huge collection of books um, and I purchased a lot of the books in order to make art, uh, wall art, furnishings, sculpture, if you would call it. Um, I would call it sculpture. And um, <laughs> so in creating this piece, I was just kind of thinking black and white and I took the materials and started building everything up. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to have an actual book. I love it. Uh, in the piece. Um, and well, you have things that like, this is a real book and these look like slanted books. These were and pieces from, you know, the book jackets, the book bindings. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also, you know, titled a paperwork show. There's tar paper in it. There's a lot of materials. I love that you're you took papers and everybody's going to think, oh yeah, books, posters, collage, and you went tar paper. Well, no, it's also <laughs> that it review. looks like if I'm reading the materiality correctly, that actually the cross hatched fibers that they use to bind the books, you've Correct. put those in and then you've extended them out, which I think is really interesting, uh, and you have. Uh, type that's from books and you have written just like an author would you I love that you integrate like hand longhand in your pieces too yeah, there's actually some pages over here um, you have to kind of get on top of it to start to see uh, different the different materials and 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 it's not just that you're using different materials but you're using them so effectively that because the, you have the staidness of like the line of books and what do books do and reading books do but project us into a world of imagination and we follow the lines of almost like thought where it can tell a story it takes you exactly yeah. and you have to be the the actual like, author i guess because you're the one you know that's going to put your own story into it you make it just there in visual terms and um, I just think that's remarkable. Well, and I so uh, much. Okay. Sorry. I also think that one of the things that I find particularly interesting about this piece is, on the one hand, it evokes books on a shelf, but on the other hand, it evokes the way your mind, like when you're talking about books and things, you go through like these are the titles, and then as you're having a conversation about words and things like that, then you start talking about the stories, and then you start talking about the concepts and then you kind of go into a world that's about like these things. So it like works on a lot of different levels, I think. Yeah, and all your work does. Okay. And with this, I mean, it's, it's a book. So it's, um, once I folded the pages, it to me took on that this could be a kite. So then it has wire coming out of it and um, more folded. Right, and you he added says, the key for Ben Franklin. Mm -hmm. And the key was added there, if you could see it. Okay. And I like that this is, this part here is more about the outside of the book. And then, jump, we have everything that's about the inside of the book. Correct, I didn't even think that way. Yeah. But it's also, like, uh, interesting because you made, you were talking about, you made this piece and you realized it was a kite and your daughter is related to Ben Franklin and you added the key. And so this is a book that you've made into a sculpture that tells a story about your family, True. which is, so you've made the book into a story. It was already a story and it does both, which I think is one of the things I love about your body of work, like, well, you have multiple bodies of work, but um, is that you incorporate like very personal, like narrative things in there. But there's also always touch of like this emotion and like um, what you have really beautiful humor and whimsy in a lot of your pieces too. Like, and you use materiality in a very interesting way, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so when we you take a look at these pieces um, and I take, take a look at the pieces, where would you like 
um, the audience for either one of these pieces to enter in order to communicate with them? Where do I want the audience to enter? Like, how do you want them to approach it? Well, I think it has to be personal to them. Um, so it could be, you know, maybe it takes somebody to their profession mm -hmm. or um, to an actual story that, you know, and a story could be anything. It doesn't have to be a story in a book. It could be a life story. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it can go a thousand different ways, I think. You know, it for someone... It's like a choose your own adventure with books, but using books as the art. True. True. Yeah. I mean, you can tell me that that's, that's a crazy thing to say. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is. You're, everybody is um, on their own journey or adventure. So, yeah. yeah. Um, hopefully, it will take the viewer somewhere personal to them. That is yeah. okay. We're looking at these two pieces, very different. They look beautiful together. Where would you see somebody who comes in to purchase something like this thinking about what, where they would put Like it? integrating it into their space. It can go into a lot of different spaces, mm -hmm. I think. Um, it could be over something where, you know, accent the width of a piece of furniture, um, just go in a lot of spaces, I think. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's like a black and white um, keeps it, 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 it could be, it's both contemporary, yet it takes me to uh, traditional mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the same time. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And um, it, you're saying it's black and white, and for the most part it is, but then it has this beautiful little, little pop. Yeah, the way you pop, integrated the, the color orange, is great, and, too. Uh, the little pops of gold. So, so it also has that little bit of luxury and sophistication. Mm -hmm. That um, which I think it, the black and white part portions take it to the sophistication. If I could get it out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have this, and um, and I could see that in almost any room too. Um, do well, you, I don't do you see it in any any yeah, special me, also, this is um, it could be for an older mm -hmm. person or a child. Yeah, yeah, because it depends how you look at it, what you what you think about it. Oh, so, it's a good feeling. I would, for me personally, I would hang this as, like, I have pretty high ceilings, so I would hang this from my ceiling as a, uh, as a piece of art in my house. Yeah. So, I mean, if people like having uh, chandeliers and hung light fixtures, why not have a hung piece of art? Mm -hmm. And it takes it to the name Flying High. Yeah, yeah. Flying High. Look up here. Perfect. So... So after after this bit of perfection, come see this bit of perfection at Palain Arts from June 2nd to August 7th.